Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to work through some examples with independent, dependent, and inconsistent systems. So in my past videos, I have showed only independent systems, that's specifically systems of linear equations. So now we're gonna do some examples involving these other types of systems. And in this video, I'm going to focus on only the 2D cases, so cases with just two variables, we'll do X and Y, and that's just to keep everything simple because I wanna show you an example of each case, and I don't want the video to be too long with using three-dimensional systems that take longer to solve. So for our first example, let's solve this system, 3X equals negative Y, and 2Y equals negative five minus X. Now, this is a fairly straightforward example in which we could use substitution. So we could solve for x, substitute it in, and then solve for y, or vice versa. But I want to also go over the addition or subtraction method for the equations. So the idea here is that we're going to take one equation and add it or subtract it to the other. And I want to show you this method because it helps motivate some of the things we do when we start to talk about matrices which is really what we're doing in linear algebra is introducing the matrix algebra. So I'll go through solving this problem with the addition or subtraction method. If you want, you could pause and work through it with substitution and then compare our final answers. But I'm gonna go ahead with the other method. So the first step in addition or subtraction of the functions to solve this is to rewrite with the variables on one side. So I wanna get these in the same form, specifically ax plus by equals c. So I'm going to just move everything over to the left-hand side, the x and the y's that is, and leave the constants on the right-hand side. So for the first equation, I have three x plus y equals zero when I add the y over. And for the second equation, I have x plus two y equals negative five when I add the x over. Now, our goal here in the next step is to multiply an equation by a constant so that we can add or subtract the equations to cancel a variable. So for instance, if we have a 3x in the first equation, it'd be great if we had a 3x in the second equation because then we could subtract these and the 3x's would cancel out. So this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to take this second equation and get it so that it has a 3x. So I can only do this if I do the same thing to both sides of the equation, that's a valid move. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of the equation by three. That yields three X plus six Y equals negative 15 as my second equation. So now I have two equations in my system as I did before. All I've done is multiply the second one, both sides of it by three, which I'm allowed to do. And now I have these two equations. So we're set up and what we're going to do now is either add or subtract the equations to cancel one variable. In this case, we're going to subtract one equation from the other to do the canceling. I'm personally going to start with our second equation, the three X plus six Y equals negative 15, and then subtract off the other equation. So we're gonna subtract three X plus Y equals zero. When I do this, I'm just gonna subtract the corresponding parts. So I do three X minus three X, that's zero X. I do six Y minus Y, I get five Y. And then I do negative 15 minus zero, which is negative 15. Then I'm left with just an equation that has one variable. I'm left with five Y equals negative 15. I can divide both sides by five and get Y equals negative three. So now I've solved for one variable and I'm just going to back substitute into the equations to find the other variable. So I can choose either one of the equations I started with. I'll show you that both work. I just need to substitute in negative three for Y and solve for X. Starting with the first equation, I'll do three X plus negative three, that's my Y, equals zero. So this is three X minus three equals zero. I'll move then three over to the right hand side. So I have three X equals three. I'll divide both sides by three and I'm getting X equals one. So I've just substituted in my solution in for y in my equation and solved for x. So you could also have done this with the other equation. So I'll show you that here. So I have x plus two y or two times negative three, that's my y, and that's equal to negative five. So this is x minus six equals negative five. When I add the six over to the other side, I'm getting x equals one. So both equations gave me x equals one, and this gives me my final solution. So my solution is the point one, negative three. So X equals one, Y equals negative three. And from this, I know that the system is consistent and independent. 
So we got a solution, that means it's consistent, and we got only one solution, so that means it's independent. We can confirm this with a graph. So I've graphed here the two lines, and you can see the point where they intersect is 1, negative 3, as we said. So this is an independent example. We're going to go over examples that are the other two types of systems as well, but this was just first to motivate this new method we're doing with the addition or subtraction. All right, we're going to now repeat this process, but with another example. So in this example, let's solve the system 4x equals 2y minus 2 and negative 2x plus y equals negative 3. So to do the addition or subtraction method, we want to get these looking in the same form. I like to put all of the variables on the left hand side and the constants on the right hand side. So it looks like my second equation is already in the right form with the x and y on the left hand side, but we need to just adjust the first equation a little bit, so I'll subtract that 2y over to the left. So now I have 4x minus 2y equals negative 2. Now remember, the purpose of this method is to try and get one of the variables to cancel out with the other, and that means they'll have the same coefficient in the front so that we can add or subtract them. So I'm just going to cancel x again here. I'm seeing that we have 4x in the first equation and negative 2x in the second. So it'd be nice if we had 4x and negative 4x because then those would cancel out when we added them together. So I'm going to take that second equation and multiply both sides by 2. That yields negative 4x plus 2y equals negative 6. Now our goal is to add or subtract the equations to solve for one of the variables. So I see if I add these two equations together, the x's are going to cancel. You might be noticing that some other stuff's going to cancel, but we'll get there in just a second. So I'm taking the first equation and adding the second equation to it. And to do this, I'm just going to combine like terms. So I have 4x plus a negative 4x. That gives me a 0x. I have negative 2y plus 2y, which also gives me a 0y. And then I have negative 2 plus negative 6, which is negative 8. So from this, I'm left with the statement 0 equals negative 8, which we know that isn't true, so this is actually not equal. This tells us that there is no solution to the system. So we tried to solve this and we ended up with a false statement. This tells us that these two equations don't have any values that make them both true, and so there's no solution and the system is inconsistent. We can confirm this by graphing. So if we graph the original two lines we were given, we see that these lines are parallel and so there are no places where they intersect and so there is no solution. This is an inconsistent system. Theoretically, you really could just graph these at the very beginning, see that they're parallel, and know that there's no solution, it's inconsistent. However, I want to show you this method because in cases higher than two dimensions, or even higher than three dimensions, we're not going to be able to graph to confirm, so we're going to need some sort of algebraic, symbolic way to find this out. For now, the graphing is a nice way for us to check our work. Okay, so we did an inconsistent system. Let's finish up and do the last type. Not even going to pretend it's some sort of surprise, we're going to do a dependent system for this last example. So let's solve the system 4x equals 2y minus 2 and 2x minus y equals negative 1. So our first step in this method, we're doing the addition or subtraction method, is to rewrite the equation. So we want the variables on the left hand side. When I do this, I get 4x minus 2y equals negative 2. And I can leave the second equation alone, it's already good. 2x minus y equals negative 1. Then remember our goal is to cancel out one of the variables. I'm going to do the same process I did in the last example and multiply the second equation by 2, both sides of it. So now when I take this second equation and multiply by 2, we're going to notice something happening. So I do 2x times 2, that's 4x, minus y times 2 is negative 2y, and negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Now we see here that we have two copies of the same equation. So these are the same equation, and this is really what tells us that this is a dependent system. But let's just suppose for some reason you didn't notice this, and let's go to the next step. So what you would do then would be to add or subtract the equations from each other. Let's say we take the first equation and subtract the second. Everything's going to cancel, so I get 0x plus 0y. That's similar to what happened in the last example, but then we also get 0 on the right-hand side. 
So I'm left with the statement zero equals zero. Generally, when this happens, this indicates that we have infinitely many solutions because that is always true. Zero is always zero. It doesn't matter what X and Y are here. And another way to tell is that we had the same equation listed twice. So from this, we have that the system has infinitely many solutions, and it means that the system is consistent, it has solutions, but it's a dependent, so there's infinitely many solutions. Now, before we look at the graph, I just want to find the final answer here. So in these cases, we want to represent all of the infinite solutions in some way. There's multiple options for doing this, but what I'll do is just suppose we have a point x and y. I'm going to leave x as what it is, and then find an equation for y. Starting with one of my equations, we're just going to solve it for y and put that in the y spot of the answer. So I'll solve this equation for y. When I add the y to the right hand side and add the 1 to the left hand side, I'm getting y equals 2x plus 1. This is an equation from my original system, just moved around a little bit. And so I'm getting my final answer is x, 2x plus 1. So any point of the form x, 2x plus 1 is going to be on our lines that were given in our system and will be a valid solution. We can confirm this by looking at the graph of the two equations we were given. So there are the same graph. They lay right on top of each other, they're the same line. And this means that there are infinite solutions because the lines are equivalent. You can also see here that this is the line 2x plus 1, y equals 2x plus 1 that is. It has a vertical intercept of 1, and the slope is up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So that's part of why we wrote our answer the way we did. Any point of the form x, 2x plus 1 will be on this line and will thus be an answer. All right, there we have it. So those are three examples, one for each of the different types of systems we have. In the future, we'll talk about how to notice these types of systems when we're working with matrices instead of the symbolic forms of the linear equations. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.